Hey, Jay Smith here again. Terrific that we're getting such a response to the last video on Is Allah in the Bible? Lots of you Muslims are coming on YouTube and you're reading it um, and you're responding to it. And what you're doing is you're actually, you're pointing me to another video uh, put on by Ahmadina while he was still living, uh, which asked the same question, Allah can be found right through the Bible. Now, rather than review that whole video, I want to review the three points that he makes there. And I'm going to give rebuttal to all three of those points. The first point he makes is, is a question and basically says, if uh, Yahweh is such an important name, if it's the name you're looking for, uh, then... Why is it you can't find this name in the New Testament? Secondly, he then goes and he says, well, actually, Allah can be found in the New Testament. And in fact, it's found twice uh, in Matthew 27, verse 46, and in Mark 15, verse 34. And then he goes and shows how that is Allah. And then the third accusation uh, concerns the name Alleluia, the Hebrew name Alleluia, and says that is a name for Allah as well. He makes those three comments, those three claims. I'm going to hit each one of those three claims and help you to realize that these are superfluous. More than that, I don't think Ahmadiyya has done a word study. He does not understand the Hebrew or the Aramaic and looks like he doesn't understand the Greek as well. So let's go back through each one of these and let's just try to answer them point by point by point. The first one, if Yahweh is that important, as we see, for, Ab for Moses it was absolutely important. He needed the name that the Israelites would recognize when he went down to Egypt and said, what is that name? Exodus 3, verse 14 and 15. And God said, this is my name forever, Yahweh, Yaha, Waha, wherever, or Jehovah, wherever you want to put the vowels. That's the name that was used then by every prophet after that. So if it's so important, why is it not found in the New Testament? Well, for one very good reason. Remember what it says back there in Exodus 3.14. Every prophet would use that name. And all the prophets use that name. Right up to Jesus Christ. He used that name. In fact, you will find it in uh, John 8, chapter 8, verse 58, where he appropriates that name for himself. I've already mentioned this in the last video. Before Abraham was... Yahweh, I am. There it is, right there. But I think we need to go back to Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 13 to answer this question, which says this, For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. So all the prophets and the uh, prophesied and used the law up until John. John the Baptist, that is. So up until John the Baptist, this is Jesus speaking this. Uh, all the prophets were, were to do this. Therefore, in some ways, you might say that name was only used by the prophets, and it was a name that the prophets used basically to give themselves authority, as Moses gave himself authority with that name. So the question I'll ask you is, if Muhammad is a prophet, he therefore should be using that name, because this is the name that all the prophets were to use. Jesus says that this thou was finished with John, the Baptist, and if you claim Muslims that Muhammad is yet another prophet, show me where he uses that name. There is the fleece. There is the challenge. Prove it. If he was a prophet, he, like Moses and all the other prophets, including Jesus himself, would have used that personal name. Because that's the name that basically delineates what God they represent. Allah is the wrong name. It is nothing more than a generic name. Now, what did they use in the New Testament? Remember, this was the holiest name it could not even be pronounced. So what did they use in the New Testament to delineate God and specifically uh, referring to Jesus Christ? And it's very simple. The word in, in Greek is kuri, kurios. Kurios means Lord. And we use that in English uh, to delineate Lord. Interestingly, in the Old Testament, every time Yahweh is used in English, it is L-O-R-D as well, Lord, L-O-R-D in capital letters. And it's the same word in, in Greek, Lord, that is then applied right to the New Testament. Ahmadita doesn't know that, he doesn't understand it, he's not done his homework, you can understand then why he's asking this question. Now that's been answered. The second question then follows on from that. What about the reference to Allah in the New Testament. And he says it's in all 2,000 languages, all 2,000 translations. And he goes to Matthew 27, verse 46, and uh, Matthew, uh, Mark 15, verse 34. Matthew 27, 46 says it, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Eli, Eli is my God, my God. In Hebrew, in Mark 15, verse, 40, verse 34, it says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Eloi is the Aramaic uh, for the same my God, first person singular of the name for God, the generic name for God, Elohim, which is the plural form, two or more. Is this Allah? Actually, it probably is the closest you will find, but we have admitted that. That's not the problem. We know that Allah, the God, is very close to Elohim, the gods, the generic name. So then why did Jesus use this? Well, Jesus used this on the cross. He was dying as one of the seven great saints on the cross. The reason he used it is because he was quoting from what David had said. David had said this back in Psalm chapter 22, verse 1. 
My God, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, why have you pers- why have you forsaken me? It's a lament by David because he felt that God was distant from him. It was this that Jesus was quoting on the cross. And so therefore, any of those that here heard him would have understood it. Now, not everybody did understand. There were those at the foot of the cross that thought he was talking about Elijah. So even those who were there did not even know their scriptures well enough to know that he was referring to that quotation by David. But then, all the more reason why, be careful. People like Ahmadiyya must be very careful about assuming that this is Allah. No, no. He's quoting David, and he's quoting that reference, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, let's then go back to the third uh, challenge, which... Absolutely. I, I really scratched my head on this one. This is fascinating. When he went on and on, in fact, almost half the, the video was on this one word. Alleluia, he says. Alleluia. There it is. Allah. Allah. In alle, lu, the liaison, and then ya. And he tries to impose his Arabic onto the Hebrew there by saying ya means oh. So basically what the, what the reference is here is Oh Allah is what it's saying. Oh Allah. And I almost had to laugh when I heard this. Fascinating. He's just turned the thing upside down and backwards. He has no idea what he's talking about. This is so typical of when Muslims completely misconstrue the Arabic. I'm sorry, the Hebrew and misconstrue the, the Greek. Muslims have done this all the time. They do it with Mahmud there in first uh, Psalm of Solomon's 5.16, they do it with John 14 and John 16, where the Parakletos trying to impose their own vowels and, and create a whole different world, where did, it's not there in the text. And it looks like Ahmadida is doing that here with the word Alleluia. Stop and think, please Muslims, you're going to be laughed out of court if you keep this kind of argument up. And I feel sorry for Ahmadida, he's not around any longer that we can correct him. Alleluia is not, oh Allah, like he would like to say. Actually, the word for God is not Allah at all. The word for God in that word is Yah, the last part. The part he says is O oh, is actually the name for God. It is the diminutive of Yahweh. Praise be to Yahweh. Praise be to God. The fact that he uses that to try to find God, actually it spins right around and comes back on him because he has just admitted what I've been trying to say. Praise be to Yahweh. It's praise be to the personal God. The God that we're looking for that we can't find in the Quran. I can understand the frustration of you Muslims, but please, you're not going to find that word. You're not going to find Yahweh there. <laughs> You've got to come home. The only place you can find Yahweh is in Hallelujah. You're right. It's in Hallelujah. Praise be to Yahweh. Bingo. Come on home, folks. If you want to find God, please do your, uh, do your homework. More than that, just come on back to the real scriptures that talk about in that personal name for God. You can know him too. He does want a relationship with you. That's why we like that personal name. It implies relationship. And it's that relationship that every one of you can have if you just come on home. This is Jay, over now.